up guys it is strider coming at you again with some more pokemon content i know i had a long weekend sorry i was very busy i did want to try to get a video up but i just did not have time um so i know lately we have been going over uh just kind of climbing up the uh the ladder on the battle spot singles um today i want to do something a little different um i don't know if any of you remember but i, I had been talking about getting together a uh, pokemon draft league <clears throat> and um I ended up getting that to go. Uh, we are drafting uh, next Saturday, not this Saturday, so that is Saturday the 16th. I'll try to keep everyone updated on that. Um, um, but since we have some inexperienced battlers in our uh, ranks here, um, I did not only want to get something out for you guys, um, but also for the people uh, that I'm drafting with so they can maybe learn um, and improve uh, as well. Um, so I just wanted to talk about um, some draft strategies here um, and also yeah, mainly, mainly just kind of things to think about whenever you're drafting a team, whenever you're building your team, um, things like that. Um, so today what I wanted to talk about um, is drafting um, cores. Um, some of you probably know what I'm uh, talking about here. Uh, some of you may not. Um, but uh, if I'll get into that in a second. Um, but here what we have is... Our, um, this is actually mm, the league that I've created uh, tier list um, with all the Pokemon here, their costs. Uh, you can see there's some, some banned Pokemon over here, some banned items. Um, and just, yeah, so here's the tier list of regular Mons, and then here's the tier list um, of the Megas. Um, and what I wanted to talk about again was going back to um, the cores. Uh, was There's kind of a common uh, practice when building a team uh, that you build around a core. Um, and a core is usually two to three Pokemon that synergize well together, uh, that can be synergized well offensively, defensively, um, even other ways, um, uh, or, uh, you know, offensive, defense, typing, um, and just other ways. Maybe one Pokemon is just really good at setting up the other one to sweep, even though they don't have a lot of typing synergy. Um, but for the most part, I do want to talk about um, typing synergistic cores, uh, mainly because I find that's the easiest um, to grasp. Um, even for myself, sometimes I have a hard time quite understanding why two Pokemon click together. Um, but whenever you can just look at a type and say, oh, yeah, a fire type would be a pretty good teammate for a water type, um, stuff like that. Um, so let's just get right into it. Oh, and I also want to talk about um, one thing that's just different than just straight up picking a core um, for regular battling is here I want to talk about um, drafting a core in a pick-efficient manner. Um, and what I mean by that is um, every core we talk about today is not going to be of the same tier. So you are going to be able to draft these cores, um, and these are just examples, you don't have to do these exactly. Also, of course, if you're watching this video um, and not part of our league exactly and using a different tier list, um, these examples may vary um, in how effective they are for you, but I, I think they still get, a, get the point I'm trying to make across. Um, so I want you to be able to draft a core that you can go one, two, three in, like literally just first pick, second pick, third pick, and feel pretty good about it, feel like you're not wasting points or wasting picks or even even reaching. Like I want you to feel like um, your cores are powerful, um, just like on their own. Like you don't want to just be like, oh, I drafted this core, but you know, part of it is the super weak Pokemon they had to draft just to fit the typing. That's not, that's not really how you want to build um, teams. So the way all of these cores are going to work, uh, except for one actually, but um, the way most of these cores are going to work is it's going to be one Mega, one Tier 1, and one Tier 2. Um, so again, the Tier 1, Tier 2, and Megas, these should be the strongest of members of your team, just in general, um, unless there's just some weird, like unless I accidentally put some super strong Mon low, um, I think for the most part that's going to be true. Um, so let's just get into it. The first type of core I want to talk about is a fire, water, grass core. Um, these have been around for a long time. Um, I think it's pretty obvious what they imply is you have one fire type Pokemon, one water type Pokemon, one grass type Pokemon. Um, these usually match up really well, both offensively and defensively. Um, offensively, obviously, um, oh no, my grass type can't get through this fire type while well, I bring in my water type and he'll wreck him. Or, you know, oh gosh, my fire type's getting hit by water type moves. I will bring in my water or grass type and they will just soak those up. Um, so let's go ahead and um, quote unquote start a draft. Um, so 
I don't know, it's the first round, it's your first pick, you don't know what to pick. Um, you end up going for Infernape. Um, Infernape is a firefighting type, if you don't know. Um, he's very flexible, he has a huge move pool, he can attack both uh, um, physically, on the physical side and on the defense side, defense five pretty equally. Um, he can be your stealth rock setter, um, he can do a lot of different things. Um, he's a pretty good first pick just due to his, I think, his just huge flexibility. Um, yeah, um, so you have Infernape here. Um, it's second pick time. Uh, you're like, wow, I can't believe, uh, where is he, this Pokemon's still around. So you end up taking Mega Slowbro. Um, Mega Slowbro is um, pretty good with Infernape, mainly because they have almost perfect type synergy. Um, or, well, not almost perfect, but um, Mega Slowbro is going to take the Psychic moves uh, aimed at the Infernape, as well as the Water type moves. Um, and Infernape's going to take the Dark type moves, as well as the Grass type moves. Pointed at, um, <clears throat> pointed at the um, Slowbro. Um, also, just offensively, they have pretty good synergy as well, uh, mainly because I would say, even though I said you can run an Infernape especially and physically, um, for the most part, um, just people like on average, you're going to see more physical Infernapes. Um, and Slowbro definitely, um, I'm very Sorry about that. Um, and Slowbro definitely will be hitting more on the special side. Um, so in that way, they work together in terms of offensive energy. Plus, again, they blow by things that wall them. Like um, Slowbro is going to have a hard time getting by certain things that Infernape is going to get past um, and vice versa. Um, so you have your first two picks. You have a Mega now, and you also have your Tier 1 pick. You're feeling pretty good. Your team's pretty powerful. Um, your third pick here is going to be Ferrothorn. Ferrothorn is just a great answer to um, a lot of things this team needs, um, and not only from a, um, I mean, mainly from a defensive uh, standpoint. Um, it's going to take grass and electric moves aimed at your, um, aimed at your um, slow bro pretty much on the chin. Like, it's just going to eat those up, no problem. Like, I think at four times, no, no, at two times just electricity, four times just grass. So it's going to just eat those up. Um, and even a little bit, <coughs> I'm sorry, on the, um, on the, uh, same thing on the, um, the Infernape side, it's going to take water type moves, obviously, on the chin. Um, the psychic moves aimed at your, your Infernape, it's going to eat up too. So there's a lot of type synergy there. Um, I have an example team here. Let me pull it up in one second. So this is an example move set here. Obviously, this is not set in stone in any way, especially in a league format. These can change completely around. You can do anything you want with these Pokemon. Um, but you see here we have a very offensive choice banded, um, just nothing but hit as hard as I can moves from our Infernape. Um, we have kind of a setup set here, uh, Calm Mind, Slack Off, Ice Beam, and Scald. Um, just pretty good type coverage there. Water and Ice actually hits a decent amount of things. Um, especially paired with your Infernape. And then that, that Ferrothorn there is kind of designed to set up Stealth Rocks and just take as many hits as it can, maybe status some things uh, with a Thunder Wave to make your uh, the rest of your Mons jobs easier. Um, and this is a good example of a um, Firewater Grass score that is pick efficient. Um, I just want to reiterate that. Um, you, you, you're not really wasting any picks. You don't have to use one of your flex spots here for like a second tier one, which I don't really know if I'd be comfortable with doing that uh, really early in the draft. Maybe that is correct. I don't know. But um, I feel like this is kind of how I want to draft. Um, I want to keep my flex spots open for later um, in case I do find a hole in my team or just something I need. I can pick up maybe a powerful tier one um, later on. Um, one thing this core, these types of cores generally have problems with, fire, water, grass cores, um, are actually dragon types. Um, and that is because dragons resist fire, water, and grass. Um, obviously, we have ice beam here. On our, um, oops, sorry about that. On our Slowbro, um, which will obviously put a dent in a lot of water types. Plus, Slowbro um, has huge defenses, so he's going to be able to take on <coughs> the, li the likes of something like a Salamence pretty well, to be honest with you. Same with like Ferrothorn. Um, but again, um, yeah, dragon types are generally something you want to worry about, so maybe you pick something that can handle those um, later on if you do go Fire Water Grass Core. Um, like maybe something like a like a, some really hard hitting fairy, or maybe a really fast dragon. Like maybe you pick up like a tier three dragon, like Haxorus, and throw a scarf on it so you can handle other dragons. Um, I don't know. There's different things. Just something to think about when you are going this core. Um, 
Also, um, hmm, yeah, but anyways, about dragons, um, dragons are actually part of another type of very common core um, called a, fi a fairy dragon steel core. So let's go back over to our document here. Um, and so again, we're going to do the same thing where we have a tier one Pokemon, we have a mega Pokemon, and we have a um, tier two Pokemon. So we're actually going to go ahead and start with our Mega this time. Last time we started. No, we're going to start with our Tier 1 again. Screw it. Um, we're going to start with our Tier 1. Um, and we are going to go ahead and start with a pretty powerful Pokemon there in Heatran. Um, Heatran can do a lot of things for your team. Um, it's another Pokemon that can set up Stealth Rocks. Um, it's super great with... Uh, actually, we're going to go Tier 1, Tier 2, then Tier 3. just Or then Mega, just because I think that kind of makes the most sense here with this core. Um, so we have Heatran. Um, He's steel, he's steel, fire, if you don't know, and he actually is immune to fire because of his ability. Um, that leaves him with a weakness to fighting, uh, water, and a four times weakness to ground. Um, but he is very good at killing other steels as well as walling steels. He's four times resist steel as well as, um, as well as, um, uh, resists dragon, he gets to resist fairy. Uh, he four times resists fairy, which is good for your dragons. Um, obviously, if you're going a fairy dragon steel core, um, Salaman, or I'm sorry, sorry, spoiler, Heatran is like maybe the best steel type overall. Um, he just synergizes us so well with so many dragons. Um, and we're going to get to that in a second with our second pick, which is going to be a Salamance. Um, now, Salamance um, is a pretty powerful, just hitter. Um, I think his attack is like base 130 or something. It's very high. Um, so yeah, he hits very hard. I mean, he also actually synergizes incredibly well with Salamence, just even from a typing perspective. So if we think about the uh, type uh, weaknesses that Salamence has, uh, he's weak to rock, um, he's weak to ice, he's weak to fairy, and he's weak to dragon. Um, now if we go back to Salamence here, Salamence is actually neutral to rock, but he four times resists fairy. He four times resists ice and he resists dragon. Um, obviously that's very good. And then if we think about it on the reverse side, um, which I don't know if you remember what we said, but we said that uh, Salamence, or I'm sorry, Heatran re uh, is weak to uh, fighting, um, water, and ground. Um, Salamence uh, resists fighting as well as water and he's immune to ground. So just a very good um, type synergy there, just on a pure defensive typing synergy. Um, just, it's great. If you're going to go this core, if, you, if, you, if you're going into the draft thinking, I want a Fairy Dragon Steel core, definitely consider picking up Heatran early. Um, he's very good with dragons, um, especially since most of them are not are, are flying or, or even the Lottie, uh, the Lottie twins, the Latios and Latios, they have Levitate. Um, so they, they just naturally defensively synergize super well. Um, in fact, the Lottie's actually synergize even better with Heatran, uh, but again, that uses up a tier one pick, and I, I just didn't want to do the two tier ones. Um, so again, um, Salamance is our next pick. Um, he uh, uh, he is a very strong attacker. He can he can attack from much like Infernape from the physical side as well as the special side. Um, he has middling speed, so a lot of times people use him as like a setup sweeper, like Dragon Dance, or even throw like a scarf on him or something. Um, one other great thing about Salamence and Heatran is they're kind of just a two-man core on themselves, um, mainly because if you really ask yourself, well, what actually walls Salamence? Uh, it's usually fairies and steel types, um, but Salamence uh, is not only great at taking those hits that are aimed at, Sal or at, uh, at Salamence, but he is also great at dealing with steel types as well as fairy types because obviously steel is um, super effective against um, fairies and fire is super effective against steel. So he's just very, very good synergy uh, with these, uh, with dragons in general, but also Salamence. Um, also, um, a lot of times, another thing to note is Salamence's ability a lot of times that you're going to run on him is Intimidate, um, which lowers the foe's physical attack. And a lot of times you're going to run... Um, specially defensive Heatran, so like a uh, very high special defense. And so the fact that you can switch in your Salamence to lower their attack um, and then have your Heatran there 
to take the special uh, attacks. Just they synergize so well together. Just dragons and Heatran in general. Heatran is like the all star of fire, fairy dragon steel type or, um, cores, in my opinion. So lastly, like I said, these two synergize almost so well together, you almost don't need a third Pokemon to do it. Um, but since it is called the Fairy Dragon Steel type, we are going to go ahead and pick up um, our Mega, and we're going to go ahead and pick up what I think is, I don't even know if there's another actually Mega Fairy out there, but I mean, I know this one. Oh, yeah, there is. But I know this one, in my opinion, and I think most people's opinion, this is the best one, um, is Gardevoir. Well, Altaria is good too, but um, Gardevoir, Mega Gardevoir is um, a very powerful uh, wall breaker. She's pretty slow. She can take. She can eat up the fighting type attacks meant for your uh, your Heatran there, um, as well as any type of dragon attacks. Again, meant for your um, meant for your uh, Salamence. Um, she just hits incredibly hard. She has Pixelate, which boosts the power of all her Fairy type moves. Um, she just there's not a lot. Again, she kind of she's only there really to finish out the core because again those two synergize so well together. Um, but she is very powerful. You will not be disappointed with a Mega Gardevoir uh, on your team. Also, one nice thing, again, um, and something I like to talk about in our last core, was that um, she kind of allows you to run Salamence mostly physical, and then you can run Mega Gardevoir mostly um, special to, to kind of, you know, make sure you can hit both physical walls and special walls um, equally. Sometimes you run into something that's so dedicated to one like if you just have nothing but physical attackers and they just have a really strong physical wall that you're just not able to deal with, um, sometimes you'll fall prey to just getting stalled out by that thing. Whereas if you had something that could hit from the special side, you'd be able to break through. Um, so let's go ahead and go to our next score. That's a Fairy Dragon Steel type. Also, guys, um, I'm, I, I do plan on making this document public so you guys can take a look at it yourself. Um, there's also some rules here and stuff um, that you can uh, take a look at. Um, so next... Um, one core that isn't really as, oh, and sorry, uh, about that fire, f fairy dragon, um, uh, steel core. Here's an example set, a couple sets I have right here. You can see we have that, uh, this is actually another specially defensive. Um, you can see it's kind of got like stealth rock toxic, very defensive moves, um, running the leftovers here. Um, um, it actually, I did mention having a steel type, um, to kill those fairies. Um, but again, this this one doesn't actually have that. Um, no big deal, though. I mean, you could obviously switch this for a uh, steel type move. Probably the Earth Power is what you'd switch. But I just I don't have it on this particular set. Um, there's the Gardevoir there. You can see it's running the Hyper Voice, the Psy Shock. Um, Psy Shock is a very strong Psychic move. Um, one I would consider running a lot of times, guys, over something like Psychic, mainly because um, Psy Shock it uses your special attack, but it actually hits their physical defense. Um, which kind of gives you, on your own, a way to hit both sides, like I had talked about, of uh, the physical and special side. Um, and here's just kind of our setup sweeper uh, Dragon Dance Salamance here. With the Intimidate, like I mentioned, um, just a strong, hard-hitting Pokemon. Going to wreck a lot of stuff. Um, one thing this core actually does need to worry about, if it's not doesn't have Heatran like this one does, um, Steel types uh, wall the crap out of these kinds of cores. Um, they resist all three of their stabs. Like if you just list uh, Fairy, Dragon, and Steel, um, uh, steel, uh, steel resists all three of those types. So make sure you have a way to deal with those on your team, maybe by picking up a powerful fighting Pokemon, or make sure you have coverage on your, um, on your uh, Pokemon in order to hit those um, fairies. So the last uh, three, ty three type core I want to talk about today um, is a Fighting Psychic Dark core. Um, again, you'll notice all these cores are kind of just like a, almost like a type triangle, um, and they kind of just all work well together. Um, so let's go ahead and get started on that. Let me go back over to our, there it is. Okay, so here we have a, um, a Fighting Psychic Dark Core. You go in, you're like, man, I really do want a Fighting Psychic Dark Core, mainly because I know they're less common, um, and maybe I'll be able to snatch up a good one. Um, so let's go ahead, and this time we're going to start with our Mega. And you're just like, well, I'm just going to take the most powerful Psychic type I can think of, and I'm going to take Mega Alakazam. Um, very fast, hits very hard. Um, coverage is okay. Not quite as flexible as I'd like. Um, his move pool isn't huge. Um, but again, just hits so hard and is so fast, he's just going to poke holes, or he's just going to blow holes in teams like nobody's business. Um, obviously, with a Mega Alakazam um, as our first pick, uh, we're going to want to look at uh, the Tier 1s here. We're looking at the Tier 1s. We see a pretty powerful Fighting-type right here in Keldeo. Um, 
Kelio is water fighting uh, very fast. Uh, well, not as fast as Mega Alexam, but still pretty fast and hits pretty darn hard. Um, can take the dark type uh, and bug type attacks meant for that Mega Alakazam pretty much just fine. Um, and, you know, vice versa, Mega Alakazam can take those, uh, take those, um, those psychic types meant, or psychic type attacks meant for the Keldeo. Um, with our third pick here, we're actually going to go with Bisharp, who is a Dark Steel um, type Pokemon. And um, so he's obviously a mute. He obviously, since he's part steel, he's uh, weak to fire and uh, ground. Uh, but Keldeo kind of handles those. Um, both uh, fire types and ground types get it super effectively uh, by the water side that is the Keldeo. And Keldeo being fighting is also weak to flying, which Keldeo being, or with Bisharp being. Uh, Steel can take that just fine on the chin, um, resists all those moves. Um, of course, he also takes the uh, psychic type moves for Keldeo and, you know, all that kind of stuff we've been talking about. Um, is super weak to fighting, so make sure you get that Mega Alexam uh, in there. Um, these types, of course, just aren't as common. Um, they still are good. Like, these are three very powerful Pokemon that you would be just fine uh, running um, on any team. Uh, this core is a little bit less flexible. Than the other ones we talked about, I feel like uh, the other cores can kind of, especially the uh, the Firewater Grass Core has a, a lot of flexibility there. Um, but again, this is just another another idea I think I want people to have when they go into the draft, just so they have more options um, and just just something to think about. Um, again, we are being pick efficient. We're going tier one, a mega, and a tier two, um, which is obviously I think at least um, pretty important. Um, here's is un. Here is an example. A uh, couple of sets here. You'll see that Keldeo, both Keldeo and Alakazam um, uh, attack on the special side and Bisharp attacks on the physical side. Um, uh, one big thing here is him being able to, oops, um, Bisharp being able to uh, pursue trap a lot of these uh, Pokemon um, makes it very... Um, very good for Alakazam. Also, uh, having that Iron Head is actually pretty important for the Keldeo here, um, so he can deal with the fairies. Fighting is weak to fairy, um, and, Kel er, and Bisharp being able to uh, hit those fairies with a super effective Iron Head um, Steel-type move is um, kind of just an added layer of synergy they have together. Um, yeah, this is a pretty straightforward core. Not a lot to it. Um, you get to resist the grass moves meant for Keldeo with the... Um, with the steel type Bisharp, um, of course, the um, it is unfortunate that you don't really have anything to take electric attacks. But again, no type. Again, it, it's very rare to have perfect perfect energy. Um, you need a lot of dual typings and interesting things to go on there. Um, the last type of core and one of my favorite cores is not necessarily um, really based on typing like the other ones are. Um, it's also not three Pokemon based. It's actually only two Pokemon based, which it's probably a good thing and a bad thing. It's good that um, you kind of get more flexibility in your draft. You, you, you're just really not – typing doesn't matter to you, so you're, you're not, like, constrained to taking those fires or whatever. Um, those fire – like, you're not like, oh, I need a fire type soon. You know, you, that doesn't matter. Um, but let's go ahead and talk about what I think is probably the best or very close to the most powerful uh, version of this this type of core, which is called a Volt Turn core. Um, volt Turn um, – refers to two different moves. There's Volt Switch and U-Turn. Um, they both kind of, one's a, uh, Volt Switch is an electric move. Uh, U-Turn is a um, bug type move. Um, but what they do is they allow you to hit and then you get switched out. Um, this is very good for keeping momentum. Um, especially like, let's say you expect them to switch and you don't really know what to do. Like, like let's say they have a Gyarados in. And I have something with Volt Switch. Well, obviously, Volt Switch being an electric move, um, Gyarados isn't going to want to take that and let's just say he's smart and I'm an electric type, he knows to switch out. Um, he switches out. I volt switch. Um, he gets to put something in. Then I get to come out, and I've done damage to this thing. Like, even if it's something that resists it, like a grass type, whatever, I still got to do damage. And now I'm sitting here with, I have the priority here. I have the momentum. I get to put in something that's good against the Pokemon he just put in. Because, because switching happens before the attack, obviously. So he switches out bring something in, I come in, hit it, I'm out, 
and now I'm at the screen where it's like, oh, put something in. So let's say he brought in a, a grass type. Well, I can be like, okay, I'm going to bring in my fire type now. So it, it's really good for keeping momentum, um, and it can really just wear down a team. Um, it, it, uh, maybe it's hard to ex – maybe I'm not explaining this very well, but it just totally can just – it's really difficult to keep up with a team that is volt switching around a lot and you turning around a lot um, and try to keep that momentum, um, especially if they have a lot of good matchups uh, type-wise against uh, some of your team. Um, so let's go ahead and get into um, a volt switch core or a volt turn core, I'm sorry. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and take really the best user of volt switch probably in this format and we're going to go ahead and go with uh, again, we're going to take the Mega first. We're going to go ahead and go with Mega Manectric. Uh, Mega Manectric is a very powerful Pokemon. Again, its move pool isn't huge, but it really is really good at the one thing it does. Uh, it's just hit really hard and hit really fast. Uh, the most common thing you're probably going to see out of a Manectric, and this is almost always going to be what you see because it's so... Uh, it hits so many different things for super effective damage, um, is uh, Volt Switch and Thunderbolt. So Volt Switch switches you out. Um, obviously, Thunderbolt is more powerful, um, and it doesn't switch you out. So there are going to be times when you just want to hit the thing as hard as you can and not switch out so you can hit it again, um, and that's what Thunderbolt's for. Um, you also uh, get the Volt Switch for, like I said, part of this core. Um, and then the the next thing is either going to be Flamethrower or, what is it, Heat Wave, I think it learns, um, which is a very powerful fire move um, to hit those steel types, hit those you know grass types that are resisting your um, electric type moves. Um, and then the last move that's... Standard, now obviously this is going to change, especially in a league format when you know exactly what your opponent can bring. Um, but the last move a lot of times on something like a Manectric is a Hidden Power Ice to hit like dragons and uh, maybe ground types that are resisting your, um, you know, that, that aren't getting hit super effectively by your other types of damage. Um, again, so you have the Mega Manectric here, you're feeling pretty good. Oh, also Mega Manectric, um, when he uh, Mega evolves, his ability becomes Intimidate, which is like Salamances where it lowers the opponent's... Um, um, physical attack stat. Um, and so not only are we going to have a Volt Turn Core, we're also going to have an Intimidate Core. Um, and what we're going to do to achieve that is take a Tier 1 Pokemon. One of the most powerful Tier 1 Pokemon is probably very flexible um, in Landorus Therian. This is a uh, flying um, ground type. Um, and what he can do, a lot of times you'll see him run Scarfed uh, to make him very fast. You can see him uh, with Stealth Rocks. Um, but the most important thing about him for this is that he has Intimidate. So you can so imagine fighting a physical attacker and literally just volt turning, volt switch, and then you turning in and in and in on this guy. He's going to have no physical attack at all. He's just he's not going to be able to do anything. Um, so he has U-turn and he has um, one of his moves is U-turn and that he can learn. And um, he also has that intimidate ability, ability, which is again this is one of the most annoying things um, to fight against, especially as a physical attacker when you know he's just going to keep you know chipping away at you as well as just reducing your attack every turn, making you just so close to useless. Um, again, this is only a two, a two mon core. Um, these do have pretty good defensive synergy. Um, well, it has okay defensive synergy. Um, Landorus, or Me Mega Manectric doesn't actually uh, resist any of the types Landorus is weak to, which if you're interested is uh, water and um, ice. Um, but Mega Manectric's only weakness is ground, and Landorus T being a part flying obviously is immune to that. So they do have some defensive synergy there. Um, but again, um, typing synergy isn't everything. This this core is very synergistic just on the nature of what it does. So let's go ahead and take a look at what, what this core exactly is going to want to do. Oh, did I not make it? I thought I did. Well, I'm sorry. We'll go ahead and throw it. No, I know I did. Hold on. What did I do with it? Maybe I closed it. I could have just closed it or something, not thinking. Uh, let's see. Maybe. Is it this one? Sorry, guys. Huh. Okay. Maybe I just completely closed it. And, yeah. Okay. I'll just go ahead and make a... Um, We'll just go ahead and do this real quick. It will not take long. Let's go ahead and take uh, Manectric. Uh, we'll go ahead and give it Manectite, I think is what it's called. And, yep, and we'll go ahead and give it the exact move set I had talked about. Um, Thunderbolt here. Uh, we'll go ahead and give it uh, Flamethrower. And we'll go ahead and get it, like I said, Hidden Power Ice. Um, and these, whatever, just give us that. It's fine. Uh, and then here... We'll go ahead and do Landorus. 
Um, also, another really good thing about this core that something I've talked about a couple times, and I'll just reiterate it one more time, is um, the fact that, again, Landorus hits very hard from a physical side, and Manectric hits very hard from a special side, leaving not a lot of stuff that can wall both of these very effectively. <coughs> um, again, uh, we'll go ahead and do the choice band here. It's a pretty, or choice scarf, I mean. So you have two, oh, that's actually banned. Um, that's actually, you'll have two very fast mons here. Um, you can just keep switching in on something that just is going to get absolutely obliterated. Um, let's go ahead and do U-turn. Like I said, um, what else is common on this guy? We'll go ahead and do the Earthquake. Uh, Stone Edge. And I think I learned Superpower. Yeah, Superpower is good. Get through those steals that, uh, for whatever reason, Earthquake can't hit. Uh... And yeah, we'll go ahead and give it just a pretty standard spread here of uh, just hit as hard as you can, please. Um, and then, yeah, you can look at both of them right here. Here, you know what? We'll even do this. Um, electric, mega. Oh, I got rid of everything. Okay, well, hold on. That sucks. Uh, bolt, switch, flame, thrower, hidden power, ice. Boom. And boom. Okay, so this is kind of what this team's going to look like, or just core. Um, again, I think it's good and bad that it gives you just two. I mean, only having two uh, means it's probably a less focused core, but at the same time, it's a less, um, it leaves you a lot more flexibility for the rest of your team. You can do a lot of things from here. Volt, Torn, Volt Turn's only going to be a small part of your team. Um, again, um, Minectric itself is not super flexible, does not have that many good moves, um, but the Landorus is actually super flexible. It can learn a lot of different moves, can do a lot of different things. Um, with that Intimidate ability, it can be physically defensive um, instead of offensive if you just wanted like a defensive variant of this. Um, yeah, so that's kind of what I, oh, and then um, the last thing I want to talk about is let's just go ahead and talk about building your own court. You're like, well, all these are nice, but I just kind of want to do my own thing. Um, so when I'm setting out to build a team and I want to start a core for my team, my my general idea first is I pick one Pokemon. And I usually like to start with some kind of sweeper, um, like usually something that's going to set up like, uh, what's an example of this, like a Volcarana, like something that has like, he has Quiver Dance, or like some kind of dragon that has Dragon Dance. Um, so I usually like to think, okay, uh, I'm going to sweep with this Pokemon. That is my goal. Like in the late game, my goal is to switch this thing in. It's going to click boost its boosting move a time or two, and then it's just going to clean house. So when I do that, I ask myself two questions. I say, what walls this Pokemon? So like what, because um, there's really two ways to quote unquote beat a Pokemon. There is walling it, right? So when I say wall, I mean like, like there are just certain Pokemon that, um, you can't beat. Like, there's certain Pokemon that Mega Manectric just cannot beat. Like, he just can't. Like, that, he's just gonna not do enough damage. Like, just, he's gonna sit there, whatever he's hitting, like something like a Chansey, this thing's not gonna do that much to you. Chansey's just kinda gonna sit there and laugh at it. Like, it does not care what Mega Manectric does to it. So you need something, so you need to ask yourself, what walls this? And so, if you figure out what walls it, then you can say, okay, well, what beats those walls? Or, if, even if it's a type, like, if you're like, oh man, I have a fire type, um, in general, waters beat me. So your or waters um, wall me. So you're like, well, okay, I need something that can beat it. That's kind of how the fire, water, grass, you can kind of see how all these types of cores kind of got built um, from that first stepping point. So we're going to go ahead and pick a um, a wall or a, uh, a core. And uh, interesting thing about this core is I picked all tier two Pokemon just to show that you can build cores from, I mean, tier two's not super low, but again, it's not like this is just like, oh man, I I can't have three tier ones and Omega, you know. So this is a three-man core, um, and so what I did was I started with one Pokemon, and the Pokemon that I started with um, was uh, Gyarados. A set, I'm like, well, okay, I want to win with Gyarados. I'm going to set up with this Gyarados, and I'm going to win. And, you know, late game, I'm going to hit Dragon Dance, and then I'm going to sweep them with Stone Edge, Earthquake, and Waterfall. Um, whatever. Um, and so then I said, or actually it was a, uh, yeah, so again, no Megas, nothing. So if we go back to our tier list, just so I can uh, bring that up again. And then if you go, and I'll go ahead and build, um, I'll build a set with this in it as well. I'll go ahead and build some of these sets. So I say, okay, um, great, uh, Gyarados. What, what 
threat. Oh, and I don't know if I talked about this. So the other thing that you need to talk about, other than what walls Gyarados, I'm sorry, is what threatens you, right? So the other way to beat a Pokemon is just to kill it, right? Like, Chansey just laughs at, um, what's it called, and slowly whittles it at, at um, Manectric and slowly whittles it down with, like, Seismic Toss. But the other way to beat a Pokemon is I can just kill you. Right? Like, I can just one-shot you with some move. Um, so really, the thing, obviously, with Gyarados that you need to worry about um, are rock-type moves are super effective against you. I think a lot of people just think it's um, electric, but just so you do know, he is weak to rock. Um, and the other thing that threatens you, obviously, is electric-type moves. So you're like, hmm, okay, well, I need to say something that can take hits for me. Like, I need something that's going to take those hits for me. Um, and one good example of that is um, we actually talked about this Pokemon earlier. Again, so Gyarados, Tier 2, um, is Ferrothorn. Um, Ferrothorn is a grass and steel type. Again, we talked about him in one of our, I think it was our fire, yeah, fire, water, grass core. Um, and he resists both of those um, types. And honestly, a lot of things that are going to hit for that type of damage, he's just going to wall anyways. He doesn't care about electric types. He doesn't care about, um, I guess, Mega Manectric in particular. He kind of gets beat up by because he has Flamethrower. Um, but again, uh, he just takes those hits from my Gyarados on the chin just fine. Also, Gyarados is kind of slow for a sweeper. Um, and so like a Ferrothorn with Thunder Wave um, can really help the Gyarados um, kind of get that speed advantage on his opponents he needs in order to just start breaking through the walls in the, his uh, team. So, um, again, so now that we figured out something to take the hit, so something that, to beat the things that threaten us, uh, now we need to think, okay, well, what, what walls me, right? Like, what, what stops me? Um, and for the most part, the answer is actually bulky grass types. Um, Gyarados generally will run something like um, Dragon Dance. So, again, we talked about him being our sweeper. So, Dragon Dance, now obviously in a league format, this changes. Like, you don't always have to bring this type of, Gyarados, but I'm just using this as an example. So Dragon Dance, um, probably some water stabs, like Waterfall is generally the water type move of choice. Um, Earthquake, a lot of times, to beat those steel types, um, as well as either Stone Edge or Ice Fang. Um, now if he brings Ice Fang, he gets to those grass types a little bit easier. Um, water types still kind of give him trouble, but again, Ferrothorn can take those on as long as you give it a grass move. Um, but again, um, so one thing to beat um, bulky grass types, like I had said, uh, especially because, again, if you run Earthquake and Waterfall as two of your, like, main moves you're going to hit them with, um, uh, grass types actually resist both of those. So, um, anyway, so what we're going to do is we're going to bring Volcarona. Uh, Volcarona is a fire. Uh, also, Volcarona has a, um, one nice thing about Volcarona with Gyarados, um, again, is that Volcarona is super weak to rock, which again, Ferrothorn takes care of. He can just take those hits just fine. Um, Ferrothorn is weak to water, which again, Fer uh, Ferrothorn takes just fine. Um, so again, he, Ferrothorn not only synergizes with our Gyarados, but he also synergizes with our Volcarona. Um, and the nice thing about Volcarona is that um, he hits on the special side. Again, I talk about separating those two attacking types really can make your life easier. Trust me, there are going to be times I know uh, a lot of times you, it's fine, it doesn't matter, but you are going to run into walls that just completely wall your team because you're nothing but physical um, types. Um, again, so Volcarona here um, is a special sweeper, actually. He can also set up, if we find that Gyarados has, has a bad matchup this week setting up, we can always bring our setup um, Volcarona um, and maybe uh, sweep a team like that. So let's go ahead and, um, I, again, I don't actually have a set. I didn't actually think that far for whatever reason. Um, but let's go ahead and we'll go back here, and again, you can see these are my lists. Oh, where are all my teams? Oops. Oops, 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 oops. Okay, whatever. Um, so we're going to go ahead, and we're going to go ahead and make a new team here. Um, we'll call this, we'll call it GFV, Gyarados, Ferrothorn, and... Um, so again, let's go ahead and start with our Gyarados that we said. And again, this is all, this is you making, this is us making our own core. I know this isn't like a pick efficient one, but I kind of wanted to almost show more that you can still get powerful cores without drafting super high picks. You could, like you could have a later pick, um, like maybe tier threes and tier fours of a Firewater Grass core, kind of just like a secondary nice uh, synergistic package that you can bring in sometimes. Um, and I just kind of wanted to show that. So we're going to go ahead and bring in, uh, we'll give him a Lumbear. No, 
We'll give him a life orb. He's going to be super offensive. Um, Intimidate, again, a great ability. Um, so, yeah, he's going to be set up. He's going to set up for us. Uh, we're going to go ahead and bring, like I said, Waterfall. We'll just go ahead and bring Waterfall, Earthquake. Oops. And we're going to go ahead and bring the Stone Edge. Um, edge Quake. This this com this type combination right here, Edge Quake, is generally what it's called, um, is just kind of a very good um, set of moves to have. Um, it hits so many. There's not very much that resists both, is what I'm trying to say. Um, yeah, whatever. That's fine. Um, so let's go ahead and look at our Ferrothorn here. Uh, we'll probably just run the exact same set we ran earlier. We'll go ahead and give him Leftovers. Uh, we'll give him Thunder Wave, like I mentioned. Power Whip. Uh, we need a Stealth Rock Setter on our team because we don't have another one. And we're going to go ahead and give him... I think I have Leech Seed on the other guy. Uh, yeah, whatever. It doesn't matter. I mean, it does matter, but it doesn't matter for the purposes of this example. Um, and then again, Volcarana here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and make him a setup sweeper too. We're going to go ahead and give him a Lumberry so he can't get paralyzed or poisoned or whatever. Uh, and yeah, we'll just go ahead and give him Quiver Dance, uh, Hidden Power, Ground. Uh, what do I want on this guy? We want Bug Buzz. And we want... We might want Giga Drain there. That will do Bug Buzz. Bug Buzz. And we'll go ahead and just give him Fire Blast. Just give him the most powerful fire time we can think of. Um, again, so here's our core here. All tier two Pokemon still like this is this this holds up well against a lot of teams, I would say. Um, you do need, I will say this, with both Gyarados and Volcaron on your team, you do need a spinner, something to get rid of rocks, or a defogger, again, something to get rid of stealth rocks, so you don't get just crushed. Um, but yeah, this is just an example of um, just kind of a core I whipped up real quick. Uh, this literally right before I made this video, I was like, well, I kind of want an example. This took me two minutes. Um, again, so just just ask yourself those questions uh, when you are thinking. Like maybe you just feel like, well, I don't know, but I just picked this Pokemon um, the first round, and I didn't go through all these steps of thinking about the cores I would want, but maybe now you can make that thought process of, well, what walls him? Uh, what walls this Pokemon I have? as well as what threatens it, and you can just kind of pick around that. Um, yeah, I hope this helps all of you guys uh, out watching it, um, especially the people in my league. Um, I, I know some of you probably uh, might benefit from this. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I am going to make some more. I do have some more topics of discussion I want to get out before the draft happens, um, and, and I'm planning those right now. I'll probably try to get one out tomorrow or the next day. Probably tomorrow. I'm, I'm going to try to do one Tuesday, thir Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Um, and then hopefully that'll be a decent set to help you guys just get started and kind of get your mind around how the draft is going to work. Um, yeah, if you guys have any questions um, or comments, just please put them on YouTube. Um, and if you enjoyed the video, please like. Uh, thanks again, guys, and have a good one.